Edward and Stefania Andrews of Arlington Heights attended a cocktail party at the Sheraton Chicago Hotel on 505 North Michigan Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, on Friday, May 15, 1970. The party was sponsored by the Women's Auxiliary of the Beverage Institute, which Stefania was a member of. Edward Andrews was a manager and bookkeeper for a Chicago manufacturer. Stefania was a credit investigator. She had certainly made an effort for the occasion, wearing her newest cocktail dress and best jewels. Both were planning to retire within the year. They arrived shortly after 5.30 p.m. and were reported to have been in good spirits at the time, although according to Edward Andrews' co-workers, Edward became ill during lunch on the day he vanished and remained sick for the rest of the afternoon. Attendees at the cocktail party reported that Andrews appeared ill, but told his wife that he was hungry and wished to leave the party early in order to get a meal. Both had been drinking alcohol. They left the King Arthur room of the hotel at 9.30 p.m. The Andrews were not wealthy, but both had worked hard for everything they had and were proud of their automobile, which they had purchased a year earlier brand new. It was a black and yellow 1969 Oldsmobile Sports Coupe with the Illinois license plate number BB9986. As the couple headed down to the parking garage, witnesses reported that Stefania appeared upset. The car park attendant and the hotel manager both remembered the couple because Edward Andrews was staggering as he approached his vehicle. While attempting to maneuver his way out of the garage, Edward sideswiped a door and the valet walked over to the car and advised Mr. Andrews not to drive and to take a taxi instead. As he leaned in through the window, he noticed Stefania Andrews seated in the front passenger seat, crying. Mr. Andrews ignored the advice and proceeded out of the garage at speed onto the lower deck of Michigan Avenue, where he illegally drove south in the northbound lanes towards the Michigan Avenue Bridge and Wacker Drive. Since that evening, neither Edward nor Stefania have been heard from again. It was not until the following Monday that the Andrews were reported missing. Stefania and Edward's co-workers became concerned because they failed to arrive at work. Friends and neighbours described the couple as conscientious and unlikely to leave town without notifying their employers and family. Everyone who knew the couple also said they were never known to drink heavily. The police visited their home in Arlington Heights and found newspapers piled on the front lawn and letters accumulated in the mailbox. A neighbour who had been entrusted with a key to the couple's house admitted detectives into the residence. Everything inside was orderly and nothing appeared to be missing. There has been no activity on Edward and Stefania's stocks and bonds bank accounts and 14 credit cards since their disappearance. Stefania is described as a Caucasian female, grey-brown hair, brown eyes with pierced ears. Last seen wearing a cocktail dress with jewellery. Edward is described as a Caucasian male with grey hair and brown eyes. He has an unknown tattoo on his left lower arm. The police ruled out robbery as a theory as the Andrews were not carrying much cash or valuables when they went missing, although Stefania's jewellery had an unknown value. After the couple was reported missing, the police initially thought they had drowned. They theorised that when Edward had realised his mistake about driving in the wrong direction, he had then attempted to make a U-turn on the lower level of the Michigan Avenue Bridge accidentally driving into the Chicago River through an area that was not secured by a guardrail at the time. However, authorities searched the river twice during spring and the summer that year, using various equipment, only to find nothing. 
Police suggest that Edward was possibly intoxicated or was suffering from an illness when he drove out of the hotel's garage. Investigators incidentally found an area of the bridge on Lower Wacker Drive where there were scrapes on a concrete pillar and skid marks on the road. But numerous searches of the river turned up no evidence. In 1980, a general cleanup of the Chicago River produced 12 automobiles, but none of them was Edward and Stefania's car. The year following their disappearance, police conducted additional searches of the Chicago River and adjacent areas of Lake Michigan. A sonar technician involved in these operations stated he was 95% sure that the Andrews car was not in the water. Later, in 1973, an Arlington Heights detective suggested that the bottom of a barge might have come into contact with the missing couple's vehicle and crushed it into the bottom mud of the river, or even pushed it into the lake. In 1974, a tip-off led authorities to carry out further underwater searches, this time in the harbour near Navy Pier, though this too came up empty. A year later, in 1975, a psychic stated that the Andrews had been murdered on Chicago's south side, followed by another psychic's claim that they were killed with their bodies and car submerged in a lake the following year. The Andrews were later declared legally dead in 1978. In 1994, the case was revived when a man came forward and informed police that the couple had been murdered and submerged with their car in a Green Oaks, Illinois pond. Lake County and Arlington Heights Police decided to act on information received from the 36-year-old Knollwood man. Police acknowledged that the whole search might turn out to be an expensive wild goose chase, but said they had to pursue the tip because enough of the information the man provided has been borne out to warrant a search. About every third sentence he told us was true, said Captain Kurt Causey of the Lake County Sheriff's Office. We verified some of what he said through police reports. The man told police that the Andrews were killed and stuffed in the trunk of their 1969 Oldsmobile. The car was then submerged in the pond located south of Atkinson Road and east of the Tri-State Tollway near Green Oaks. While police expressed extreme skepticism regarding the man's account, the reason he told police he had not come forward sooner was because he had suffered amnesia. Divers initially recovered two pieces of metal during the first dive that resembled pieces of the underside of a car. The man, who in 1970 was aged 13 and lived in Lake Forest, said a group of Lake Forest youths were responsible for the couple's disappearance. He said he was at the pond when the car was dumped there. Police said the man was a relative of the Andrews and told police he has had amnesia for 23 years. Police have not said whether he is a suspect in the disappearance. If they find them out there, that would be unreal, absolutely amazing, Van Rout said. We have always wondered what happened to the Andrews. We tried everything. But the search was called off in the late afternoon and suspended indefinitely after divers located a large object several feet deep in the muck but could not determine what it was. It's the right size, but there is no way to get equipment in there to find out what it is, Corsi said. The location, about five to ten feet offshore, was marked with a yellow buoy. Before an expensive effort is undertaken to dredge the area and lift the object, Police want to question the man further and check out the names of the Lake Forest youths he gave them in connection with the Andrews disappearance, Corsi said. Arlington Heights police, who were also at the pond Tuesday, will try to locate equipment that could determine what the object is and recover it, the police captain explained. 
We don't want to pull something up unless we know it's the car, he said. During the 1970s, the pond was privately owned and was used for water skiing. But in the 1980s, it had become obscured by weeds and brush. Abbott Laboratories had purchased the property, a spokesman said. Why detectives didn't investigate the large submerged object is not known. If they couldn't get equipment down there in 1994, surely advancements in technology would better assist them now. My dear viewers, this is where the trail ends. As of 2020, their disappearance remains unsolved and their ultimate fate unknown. Family, friends and acquaintances had described the couple, married six years at that point, as happy. Ron Van Rout, the retired Arlington Heights detective who investigated the case in 1970, said, Two people in their 60s in a car don't just vanish off the face of the earth. Not intentionally, at least. If there's one thing to get my attention for days on end, it's cases where people have went missing without a trace. Uh, you know, I'll be thinking, I'll be, I'll be lying in bed for nights, wondering what happened to that person or persons. It, it just gets me every time. I, 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 don't, I don't like to leave something without an ending. You know, I think a lot of you will know what I mean. Even this case, I would lie in bed thinking about what happened to them? Where, where did they go? I'm trying to get an answer, which of course doesn't come. Uh, different possibilities flashing through my mind. What do you think happened to them? You know, while researching this case, I, I just stumbled upon a missing persons uh, website from uh, Chicago area, Illinois. My God, it's so tragic over the decades. How many people have just disappeared off the face of the earth? I mean, you know a lot of them have been murdered, for sure. Some may have just created another identity to escape whatever and whoever, but many have been murdered. But cases like this one where you think, what happened? They went out for dinner? Um... Uh, those seem to be the logic possibilities that the car skidded off the bridge, but they didn't find the car. I mean, they had a good look for it. Uh, or that they were, you know, they stopped somewhere at the traffic lights and they were dragged out of their car or pushed into the back seat of the car and taken away and murdered. That, But I, you know, I want to know where they are. And the bit about the end there, where the police in 1994, no follow-ups on that, I checked, no follow-ups. What was that large shape that resembled a car at the bottom of the pond that they didn't bother bringing up? And what happened to the guy they questioned, that they said, you know, he knew all these things that he shouldn't have known, etc. What happened? Any of the police officers involved in that case, once this gets to YouTube, please, Leave a comment, let me know what happened to the investigation. Why did it just sort of fizzle out? Let me just clarify, of course. I mean, I know that eventually the case would go cold and fizzle out. In general, I'm talking about But I'm talking about that 1994 investigation. What was that object down the bottom there? You know, what was it? Did they not bring it up? Did you not send down, you know, scuba divers to check out what it was? That's what's killing me. <laughs> I want to know what that is. Curiosity is killing me. It's killing me, I tell you. Mind you, the, the theory about the, the barge pushing it into the mud, well, that's quite plausible. You know, it could be down there, you know, just pushed under the silt or the mud. I guess after so many years, you know, that's, well, that's like 50 years, there would just be skeletons by now. But I think for the family, it would still give them some closure. There's nothing worse for the family with missing persons. They, they can't bury their loved ones. They haven't got a body, and there's always that sort of unanswered question, where are they? Hmm. The following broadcast is a public announcement on behalf of the Oddite Party. Actually, no, it's not. It's a blooper for your amusement, my dear friends, and I will say my goodbyes now. Ta-ta, until next time. Said Captain Kurt Corsi of the Lake 
said Captain Kurt Corsey of the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Uh, said Captain, said Captain Kurt Corsey of the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Said Captain Kurt Corsey of the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Oh, <laughs> said Captain. <laughs> said Captain. Said Captain. Said Captain Kurt Corsey of the Lake County Sheriff's Office. I still can't say that.